everyone, welcome to Actual English. I'm Jennifer Clyde. It's time for lesson 343, and today's topic is etiquette three. Let's talk about personal information, how it's related to etiquette. Now, how is personal information related, you may wonder? Well, for example, when somebody asks you a personal question, especially a person you just met, okay? Not a friend, not a family member, but someone you hardly know. Now, if this person begins to ask you questions about your marriage life, how old you are, they even ask you about your blood type. When, for example, you don't even know about this person, would you feel comfortable? I would think that most people would answer, no, I wouldn't feel comfortable because there are certain questions that we should avoid asking uh, somebody we hardly know or barely know, okay, or someone we've met for the very first time. So that's what we'll be talking about today, okay? Personal information it is once again. So let's get started. When I first came to Korea, mm -hmm. eight years ago now, mm -hmm. time flies, doesn't it, when you're having fun? Um, one of the most stock questions that I was asked here was, what's your blood type? Right, me too. When I came to Korea, I didn't even know what my blood type was. No. And people would look at me like I was crazy. Mm. Like, it's like they were asking me what my birthday was, and yeah. I didn't know. Or my middle name or something, right? I yeah. had no idea. It really shocked me. Mm. I was... One, I didn't know what my blood type was, and two, I didn't know why it was important. Mm -hmm. And it took maybe like a couple of months to really understand why Koreans thought that that was such a big issue. Right. I mean, here there's the element of it defines your character right. moving forward of what type of personality you will be. Mm -hmm. And whilst I don't agree with it per se, I feel that in the UK and maybe in America as well, we use our horoscopes Okay. to define our personality traits. So right. I think it's, it's not something that's essentially wrong, it's just a different cultural aspect. Mm -hmm. And I think we find that between Korea and the West, there are many differences in terms of personal information. Right, introductory questions yeah, when you meet exactly someone. Yeah, exactly that. I found when I was going home, I would start asking my friends their blood mm -hmm. types. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what their blood type is unless it's some strange yeah. blood type that they need to know for medical purposes. Yeah. Um, and then also mm. age. Mm. Asking someone their age in Korea is a very comfortable mm. question, right, when you meet each other. And in America, you avoid that question. You never ask, particularly a woman, yeah. if she looks like she's over 30, mm -hmm. you would never ask her that question. No, definitely not. Yeah, it's something we were always taught from a very mm -hmm. young age is leave those questions well alone. But here, everything is, is acceptable, I think. It's all right. on the table to be asked. And I've become comfortable with it. Yeah, I think it helps you, actually. Yeah. Okay, how was the conversation? I think it was pretty easy, nothing too difficult, right? Okay, that was today's actual talk conversation between Martin and Mary. Let's now take a look at it together then. Here we go. Martin says, when I first came to Korea eight years ago, wow. Time flies, he says, doesn't it? When you're having fun. Okay, that's our first sentence. So the idea is what? He came to Korea for the very first time eight years ago, okay? The reason he said now is because perhaps uh, when he first came to Korea, it was around this time of the year, okay? Almost around the same time of the year. That's why he's saying it was about eight years ago now, okay? And he says time flies. You've heard of this many, many times, haven't you, okay? Time flies like an arrow. It's a long way of putting it, but people commonly say, hey, time flies, huh? Time flies. Time went by quickly. Time flew by quickly. If you say time flies, you're talking about how fast time passes by, how fast time goes by, okay? So he says, but especially time flies, doesn't it, when you're having fun? It's true. When you're enjoying yourself, excuse me, when you're having fun, time does seem to fly by quickly, move by, pass very quickly. One of the most stock questions that I was asked here was, 
What's your blood type? Okay, stock is what? Mm, stock, stock, S-T-O-C-K. Of course, you can ask somebody at a store and say, do you have this product or these shoes in a size seven? Well, the, uh, I guess the person, the salesman or the salesperson may say, let me check if that shoe or those shoes in size seven are in stock. Let me see if it is in stock. They would say this in situations where they have to go to the storage room, for example, to check if this item or these items are in the store, okay? But here stock means common, a very ordinary type, something very common, okay? So one of the most stock questions, he's saying one of the most common questions that I was asked here, here meaning in Korea, was, what's your blood type? Okay, here we go. Boom, blood type. It is a very Korean thing, isn't it? Koreans love to ask this question. What's your blood type? What's your blood type? Uh, I think the most uh, common questions or the most stock questions uh, that are asked in Korea are questions about your age, how old are you, or which year were you born in, okay? Um, another one is what's your blood type? Things like this. It's interesting, it's fun. It's a very Korean thing. But he's saying, yeah, what's your blood type was the most stock question that he was asked. Well, Mary agrees. She says, right, me too. When I came to Korea, I didn't even know what my blood type was. This is true in many cases. Many foreigners, whether they're from Europe or let's say Canada, America, wherever, not many people know their blood type. Surprising, right? But it's true. So Mary says, when I came to Korea and people asked me this question, I didn't even know my blood type. She says, and people would look at me like I was crazy. They would look at me with a strange look and kind of give me that face. You don't know your blood type? She's crazy, okay? So it was like they were asking me when my birthday was, Okay, so they would ask questions about her birthday, and I didn't know, or my middle name or something, right? I had no idea. Oh, okay, so what she's saying here is, they would ask her questions about her blood type, okay, as we see. But when she said that she didn't know what her blood type was, people thought that she was strange. Hmm, they gave her that weird look and thought to themselves, Hey, she doesn't even know her birthday, meaning she doesn't even know her blood type, something that she should know, something that everybody knows in Korea, but she doesn't know her blood type. So she's just saying that it felt as if she was being asked her birthday and she didn't know her birthday. It felt as if uh, they were asking what her middle name was and she was unable to answer that question. So she really felt stupid for a reason or felt strange, uncomfortable. But she said, I had no idea. I had no idea what my blood type was. It really shocked me, Martin says. I was one, meaning number one, first of all, I didn't know what my blood type was. And two, number two, or secondly, I didn't know why it was so important, okay? So he's talking about how he didn't know what his blood type was, nor did he know why it was so important. And it took maybe a couple of months to really understand why Koreans thought that that was such a big issue, okay? So it took him a couple of months it took him some time to finally realize or understand why Koreans were asking questions about blood types, why it was so important to him. So I guess the more he learned about Korea and Koreans, he was able to understand why people acted a certain way or why people would talk about something or ask certain questions. So he came to understand how Koreans thought. Here, there is the element, okay? Element is kind of like an item, okay? Something that causes a result, okay? Like a cause. Here's or there's the element of it identifies or it defines 
your character. It tells you what your character is, okay? Your blood type. It's almost like blood type equals character in Korea. Moving forward of what type of personality you will be. So, yes, it defines your character. So it also tells you about your personality. We're talking about blood types once again. And whilst I don't agree with it per se, I feel that in the UK and maybe in America as well, we use horoscopes to define our personality traits. Okay, let's take a look at this long sentence over here, from there to there. First of all, we've got whilst, W-H-I-L-S-T, whilst, whilst. You may not commonly hear this word, whilst. You may read it a lot, but it's uh, British English. It's mainly used by the British, and um, it just means while at the same time. Uh, we Americans say while, but, um, you know, in British English, whilst is often used. So in while, I don't agree with it per se. Per se, we've gone over this in the past as well. Now, per se basically means in itself or by itself. When you're talking about something on its own, just that thing, without connecting it to anything else, you would say per se, okay? I feel that in the UK and may maybe in America as well, we use horoscopes to define our personality traits. So what is a horoscope? A horoscope, I'm sure you're familiar with it too. We often see horoscopes in magazines uh, towards the end, towards the back of a magazine. You may flip through the pages and, for example, I am an Aquarius, which is 물병자리 in Korean. So that is my horoscope. I would look through the horoscope pages just to you know, find out about my day, my month, my look, I mean, my, my luck, that is. So it's like forecast of your future, kind of, or your luck, love life, things like that. So in the UK and maybe America, a lot of people, yeah, turn to horoscopes. They read horoscopes. Why? To define their personality traits. Whereas in Korea, it's about blood types when it comes to character and personality. So I think it's not something that's essentially wrong, okay? You say it's not wrong, it's just different. It's just a different cultural aspect. It's just a different way of seeing things and viewing things and understanding things. And I think that we find that between Korea and the West. There are many differences in terms of personal information, definitely. There are many differences in terms of personal information. Moving on, Mary says, right, introductory questions when you meet somebody. Here we go. Introductory questions. Okay, we'll take a look at the word introductory later on, but um, introductory means what? The basic, fundamental, the very beginning of something. So she's saying, yeah, that's true. There are many differences between, you know, Korea and the West, especially things related to introductory questions. Exactly that, and then they say, I found when I was going home, okay, going home meaning what? We're talking about her home country. I would start asking my friends their blood types. She's become Koreanized. So she's saying that after having stayed in Korea or after having lived in Korea for a while, she became a little bit like a Korean. She became Koreanized. So when she went back home to her home country, she would ask her friends, what's your blood type? So she would act like a Korean. And they don't know what their blood type is unless, unless when? It's some strange blood type that they need to know for medical purposes. Uh, you may have to know your blood type for medical purposes. That is just in case something goes wrong and you have to go to the hospital and um, you may have to get surgery all of a sudden. So if you do have a problem, like a health problem, in some cases you need to know what your blood type is. Otherwise, people 
aren't really interested in their blood types. Many people don't know what their blood types are. And then also age, that's right. So if you get older and older, you might have to know what your blood type is. Asking someone their age in Korea is a very comfortable question. That's, that's true. When you meet each other, so we're talking about asking someone their age in Korea, and what about in America? And in America, you avoid that question, meaning what? You try not to ask that question. You avoid something, meaning you try not to do it. You stay away from something. You try to prevent something. So in America, you try not to ask questions about age. You never, never ever ask particularly a woman if she looks like she's over 30. Okay, you would never ask her that question. So she emphasizes that. She stresses the fact that you would never ask a woman that looks like she's over 30. Okay, never ask her age. Keep that in mind. Never ask a woman who looks like she's over 30 her age. Okay, anyhow, going on. Martin says, no, definitely not. Do not ask that question. It's something we were always taught it's something we were always taught from a very young age. Ever since we were little, we were told, leave those questions well alone, meaning leave those questions out, do not ask those questions. But here in Korea, everything is acceptable. Everything's okay. It's no big problem. It's all on the table to be asked. Okay. If something is on the table, it means what? Imagine there's a large dining table in front of you and you throw a piece of paper on it. Everybody will look at that paper, okay? It's as if you are throwing something on the table to discuss, talk about. So here he's saying everything seems to be acceptable. It's all on the table to be asked. It's out there. It's out there in the open for people to look at and talk about freely. And I've become comfortable with it, she says. And yeah, it, I think it helps you actually, he says. So they have both become very comfortable uh, with people asking questions about age and blood type. So these two have definitely become very Koreanized. And he says, I think it helps you actually to get used to certain situations. Okay, let's take a listen to the conversation one more time. When I first came to Korea, mm -hmm. eight years ago now, mm -hmm. time flies, isn't it, when you're having fun? Um, one of the most stock questions that I was asked here was, what's your blood type? Right, me too. When I came to Korea, I didn't even know what my blood type was. Oh. And people would look at me like I was crazy. Mm. Like, it's like they were asking me what my birthday was and yeah. I didn't know. Or my middle name or something, right? I yeah. had no idea. It really shocked me. Mm. I was, one, I didn't know what my blood type was. And two, I didn't know why it was important. Mm -hmm. And it took maybe like a couple of months to really understand why Koreans thought that that was such a big issue. Right. I mean, here there's the element of it defines your character right. moving forward of what type of personality you will be. Mm -hmm. And whilst I don't agree with it per se, I feel that in the UK and maybe in America as well, we use our horoscopes okay. to define our personality traits. So right. I think it's, it's not something that's essentially wrong. It's just a different cultural aspect. Mm -hmm. And I think we find that between Korea and the West, there are many differences in terms of personal information. Right, introductory questions yeah, when you meet exactly someone. Yeah, exactly that. I found when I was going home, I would start asking my friends their blood mm -hmm. types. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what their blood type is unless it's some strange yeah. blood type that they need to know for medical purposes. Yeah. Um, and then also mm. age. Mm. Asking someone their age in Korea is a very comfortable mm. question right when you meet each other. And in America, you avoid that question. You never ask, particularly a woman, yeah. if she looks like she's over 30, mm -hmm. you would never ask her that question. No, definitely not. Yeah, it's something we were always taught from a very mm -hmm. young age is leave those questions well alone. But here, everything is, is acceptable, I think. It's all right. on the table to be asked. And I've become comfortable with it. Yeah, I think it helps you, actually. Yeah. Are you ready for actual expressions, everyone? 
Okay, then let's go over the vocab words and the patterns. Here we go. We have stock, stock. Now we saw stock questions in today's actual talk conversation, so it was used as an adjective. It's easy to pronounce. Stock, stock. I said common, right? Very ah,、uh, very common. Nothing strange. Basic is a synonym. Normal, ordinary. Okay. Routine, typical. Okay, these three synonyms are perhaps the easiest ones. Okay, stock means basic, ordinary, typical. What about element? Element. Here we go. We're talking about an item, even an aspect of something, a part of something, even a view. All right, an element of something. The cause of a certain result is also an element. Whilst, as I said, it's chiefly British. Okay, whilst, whilst the st is pronounced, so it means while at the same time during something, as、uh, North Americans often say, while the British may say whilst. Keep that in mind. What about horoscope? This is easy, but let's just check out the pronunciation. Horoscope, horoscope. One more time, horoscope. Basically, we turn to the horoscope page to find out about our luck, our fortune, right? So, astrology is another way of putting it. Prediction, okay? It's a forecast of、uh, what will happen to us. Introductory is what? Introductory is a vocab word. As I mentioned, it means basic, elementary, fundamental, preparatory. Something that relates to the beginning of something. Okay, we were talking about introductory questions today. Moving on to our pattern for today. Time flies. You will hear this a lot. You will read it a lot, and you will have many chances to say it. Time flies. You want to say it when it feels as though time passed by really quickly, or when time passes by so quickly. I can't believe your brother already graduated high school. Wow, he graduated high school already. How time flies! Wow, 시간 정말 빨리 간다. Exactly, how time flies. Wow, time flies like an arrow. Okay, that kind of sounds old-fashioned, but time flies. It's much more commonly used, and it sounds more modern. So try saying that. What about per se? Per se. Stress goes on. Say. Say. Per se, so we're talking about something on it on its own by itself. Usually, when you're not making any connections with anything else, when you look at one thing just on its own, your explanation about the movie is not wrong per se. But I think it would be better if I talk about it instead. So she's saying your explanation may not be wrong per se, but It does have many other sides, many other aspects. So maybe I should be talking about it. Okay, per se could be a bit tricky to use, but just keep it in mind. And finally, put on the table or be on the table. Something can be put on the table or be on the table. It means it's open for discussion. Okay, it's out there for everybody to talk about. I put all my emotions on the table. And my boyfriend didn't even notice. So what are we saying? I put my emotions on the table. Emotions, emotions. 마음을 꺼내서 봤어요. Okay, you take everything out and you put it out. You talk about your emotions, but your boyfriend he doesn't even notice. He doesn't realize. He doesn't care. So you're saying that you put your emotions on the table. You left it open to talk about, but in this case, her boyfriend didn't even notice. Okay, so please do keep these patterns and vocab words in mind. Practice some more on your own.